Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we're going to be reviewing Milo Talon by Louis L'Amour, book number three in his Milo Talon trilogy. Starts with Rivers West, The Man from the Broken Hills. I previously reviewed both of these books on the channel. If you want to read, if you want to watch those reviews first, type in my name, Durfee, title of the book. The review will magically appear on your computer screen. Now, Milo Talon is book number three in the trilogy, and it's the best book of the group. And this trilogy, as I've said before, is one of Louis L'Amour's most action-packed grouping of three novels that you're ever going to find in the Louis L'Amour collection. And I got every Louis L'Amour book. I do. I've got them all. They're all super dope. But I'm telling you, I really, really am impressed with this Milo Talon trilogy. It just started with a bang and never let up. The just action, adventure, gunslinging, gunfights, outlaws. Oh, love it. Love it. In fact, let's talk about the cover. This book came out in 1981. You know, I love graphic design and cover illustration, so we always go over that first. I like this. It's a very colorful cover done by Lou Glansman. Now, Lou Glansman did several of the other Louis L'Amour books in, back in the day. These two covers here were done by Gordon Crabb. This one, book number three, Lou Glansman. I like it. It's got the it's got the cow, it's got Milo Talon and his horse and a dead guy out in the desert. Milo is still riding the outlaw trail in the book this book. Um he's uh ridden himself down into south the southwest Pueblo, Colorado area, if you know where that is. Um he he steps onto a railroad car, a newly built railroad car. And Louis L'Amour just does a gorgeous, it's just a gorgeously written scene as Milo Talon walks up onto this newly built railroad car and notices all the polish and grandeur and luxuriousness of this car. Like the sculpted wood and all the mahogany wood and the velvet curtains and the leather seating and, and all of the, all the rivets are like gold and everything is just so wonderfully described you can just tell the milo talon is not only impressed by this newly built railroad car but so is the reader because we're just like i i can see it in my eye louis lamore just described it for me down to the detail it was just so good and now now milo talon steps onto this car because he's meeting with this rich guy jefferson now Je the rich guy jefferson's on the train and um he wants to hire milo to find his granddaughter. Now his son has lost his daughter. The granddaughter has gone missing. And he doesn't trust his son. And as I was reading the opening to this, I was like, this is exactly like, um, well, I, I want to read this word for, I'm going to read this word for word. So, um, 15, 15 years ago, my son and I quarreled. He went west. I have not seen or heard of him since. Well, have you any idea where he is? Milo asked. How many men are simply swallowed up by this country anyway? Men drop from right under our noses every day, right out of sight, and no one takes notice. Usually nobody cares. I have helped to bury many unknown men. No names, no means of identification, no hint as to their origin or their destination. They're just laying in the desert. Some are killed by thieves or Indians. Some die of thirst, cholera, or just plain accident. No doubt, Jefferson said, but my son had a daughter, and it is she whom I hope for you to find. And not your son? Anyway, as I read that, I was like, I've read this scene before just recently. And as I was thinking about it, I'm like, this is the exact same way that Robert McCammon's I Travel by Night opened. 
It's like almost word for word. And I was like, okay, this was written way before McCammon's book. I wonder if McCammon sort of took the idea of a man searching, because this is the same setup. I need you to, I need you to find, in this vampire gunslinger novel, the setup is I need you to go find my granddaughter. And this was, I need, it's a rich man needing, now, I'm not saying that, uh, that McCammon copied this, or maybe he wrote an homage to it, I'm just, and, or probably more likely, it's just a sheer accident that, you know, Louis L'Amour came up with a story about a, a grandfather that needs to hire a gunslinger to go find his granddaughter. And it's, it's completely plausible that another guy came up with the same idea. Some, and, and, uh, but I just did, I don't know, I just read this a few months ago and it just struck me. I just thought I'd mention that. Uh, anyway, um, so Milo takes the job, even though the grandfather Jefferson says, hey, I've even hired the Pinkertons to find my granddaughter, and they failed. And if you know anything about the Old West, the Pinkertons were the investigative team that even the government used. I mean, the government used the Pinkertons. They were the guys that found every outlaw. They found Billy the Kid and, and Jesse James and, and uh, you know, Bonnie and Clyde. And I mean, the, the Pinkertons were the, were the group, and they couldn't even find. So Milo Talon's like, I, I'll give it a shot. The pay's good. I ain't got nothing else to do. Might as well keep riding the outlaw trail. And this time I'll be looking for a girl. So this is actually half a mystery novel and half a Western. And it was my favorite of the trilogy. I actually really, really loved these first two books. And this one actually was even better. Actually even better. So I am going to give Milo Talon a 9.75 out of 10. One of Louis L'Amour's better westerns by far, by far. 